If you go wild swimming, or someone you know swims outdoors, there are some rare but important medical conditions you need to know about. In this video, I'll be talking to Dr. Jim Douglas. He's a regular outdoor and pool swimmer, as well as a general practitioner in the Scottish Highlands. He's keen to pass on his experience to help keep others safe. We have other wild swimming videos on this channel. Some head to exciting places like the Galapagos and beautiful parts of Scotland. Others aim to help people starting outdoor swimming in cold water. It would be great if you'd subscribe. The first rare condition for which swimmers need to be alert is transient global amnesia. So a swimmer who's maybe 50, 60, that sort of age group, come out of the water, they've got themselves pretty cold, maybe they've dived in and they've had a lot of uh, initial heat loss from their, from their face and, the, and their head. The circulation to their brain uh, shuts down a little bit, goes into a bit of a spasm, and then when they come out of the water, they can't remember um, some pretty basic things. So they might not recognize people, they might not recognize their friends, they might go into a pattern of, of just asking questions and going back over the same question several times. The doctors might think, if they don't know about this fairly rare condition that affects wild swimmers, uh, they might think that you're having what's called a transient ischemic attack. Now a transient ischemic attack is important medically because it's a bit like a mini stroke. So in a transient ischemic attack, you maybe lose the function of your arm or your leg, and then it comes back. And then if that happens to you, then the doctors will be looking at your blood pressure, putting you on pills, all sorts of things. It can uh, affect whether you're driving and all these sorts of things. With the transient global amnesia, the wild swimmers thing, what happens is your memory does come back. It may take five or six hours. It might be that evening and then you're completely back to normal and you're completely okay and there's no problem, it doesn't, there's no permanent deficit. So a junior doctor or whatever in A&E might not know about this, so I think it's a really good idea if you are in a swimming party and a swimming party, somebody's accompanying you to A&E to get you checked out, then mention this as a possibility. There is a condition called acute pulmonary edema. It's a little bit like mountain sickness, so in other words, you get acutely breathless, um, as in altitude sickness, but, you, it, but it's nothing to do with altitude. You're in the sea. It's when you're in the sea and when you've been immersed, and it's all about facial immersion and big changes to your blood pressure. So what happens is your blood pressure starts going up through the roof and you feel very breathless. Uh, when you are taken to A&E, uh, when the doctors listen to your chest, they'll, they'll, they'll find fluid in your chest when they listen to your lungs and so on. And that's not fluid you've ingested, is no, it? No, no, no. This is fluid that your body has kind of redistributed around about your heart and your lungs into the wrong place. So it's a bit like heart, it's like a sort of temporary heart failure thing almost. Um, and it's perfectly treatable. What happens is that you just get given things, uh, drugs into your arms that will make you pass urine a lot and kind of dry your lungs out. Uh, and then it's, it, it's all over and it's fine, no problem, no long-standing long problem. It can indicate that some people uh, might end up going on to develop blood pressure at some later point, and obviously it's very frightening. You cannot breathe, you feel awful, and uh, you just can't breathe, basically, because your lungs are full of fluid. So again, that's another condition uh, which, when you go into A&E, if you're with a whale swimming party, then mention this one, acute pulmonary edema related to as to swimming and water immersion. I think common sense. So we want to encourage people to go swimming of any sort, including wild swimming, if you do have heart conditions, if you do have diabetes, if you do have anything wrong with you, arthritis, anything, because exercise is good for you and uh, you know, great mental and, and, and physical well-being from swimming in general and, 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 uh, and wild swimming in particular. Um, broadly speaking, for any of these sorts of things, if you're allowed to drive a car, um, if you've got, say, diabetes, if you've got epilepsy as two sort of kind of conditions where you can kind of collapse in the water, if somebody has said you're okay to drive a car um, for either of those two conditions, then you're probably going to be okay uh, swimming and going wild swimming. Any doubt about that sort of thing, um, I think speak to your doctor about it, but there's no reason somebody who's got diabetes, somebody on insulin, um, uh, no, got good control of their insulin, no reason why they can't. But certainly wild swimming and cold immersion will put your heart under a stress. If you've got an abnormal heart rhythm and you're on pills because of an abnormal heart rhythm, maybe ask your doctor about that first. Um, but again, it's all about 
understanding your own body, slowly adjustment, slow, slow immersion and so on, and then understanding your, understanding your own body and having people with you. That's the key thing, I think. Let your body know what's coming. That stress applies to us all, so enter the water gradually. Perhaps swim breaststroke with your head out of the cold water until your body adapts. I'll show you what's on the kit, in the kit bag, Simon. In his swim bag, as well as the usual stuff, Dr. Douglas carries an infrared thermometer so he can plan how long to swim. He swims with a watch that buzzes every 10 minutes so he tracks time. And he swims in river crocs so he can get out anywhere, even on rocks. It's important to know the signs of being in the water too long. Our normal temperature is about 36.5. When your te core temperature has gone down to 34 degrees centigrade, then you're going to start making poor judgments. You, you stop thinking very clearly, you might swim off in the wrong direction. And by the time your core temperature gets down to 32 degrees, the big problem is you're then risking your heart going into an abnormal rhythm called ventricular fibrillation, which is quite near having a cardiac arrest. <laughs> When I swim in cold water without gloves, I find eventually my hands start to claw up. Um, these fingers go first, and when that happens, I've been told to treat that as a warning sign. However, when these fingers start to claw, they work off a different nerve, I've been told that is definitely the time to get out. So if you can't feel your hands, you can't feel your feet, if they've gone into that claw shape, like you're saying, then that means that you've overcooked it and you're, you're, you're your core temperature is going to start going downhill. So the ones that, that control the, uh, these two fingers here are the ulnar nerve and the ones that control these things here are the median nerve. So the ulnar nerve kind of goes down your, 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 your arm on this channel here and the median nerve kind of goes down and goes down through your wrist and works these things here. And, and, and if that one goes, get out? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> two bits of equipment I would recommend for when you're getting back out. Yeah. Now, my family always laugh at this. Um, but it's made of sheepskin, sheepskin hat. Uh, the crucial thing is that it's insulating your neck. I tend to get Raynaud's phenomenon, so I'm one of these people that all my life have had this thing that my fingers go white when I get exposed to the cold and it's a bit of a nuisance when you kind of come out. So my practical tip for today is buy these things, they're called hot rocks, um, and you switch them on here, they're charged from a USB, um, and I have them in a pair of old um, skiing gloves and um, produces a nice warm hand uh, when you get out of the water. So one for each hand. Add a fleece lined windproof robe, get out of the wind, take a warm drink or soup and perhaps a hot water bottle. If that's been helpful, please subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment if you can add from your experience and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>